off. Starts off. <laughs> starts stuff off with uh, Figure 17, which I mentioned last week. I was rewatching with somebody online, and uh, I uh, rewatched the last seven episodes. Yes, the last seven episodes. That would be episode seven through thirteen. And I absolutely love it again. I still think it came off to a really bad ending. As good as the first half of it is, the really heavy stuff starts showing up in the second half. And unlike a lot of series that kind of have that heavy stuff kind of displayed at the forefront, sort of like Madoka Magic, I guess, where you have no choice but to admit it's getting really serious and deep. Which is something I really like about that, and I did watch the first DVD again with the same person. But, uh, Figure 17, it's just, it feels more integrated into the slice of lifeness of it, which makes me think that it's possible somebody watching it could miss that sort of stuff. But the basic idea is the reason I like Figure 17, why it's one of my personal top favorite anime, is just. The execution is really good and it's bookended by a really good start and a really good finish. I always feel very satisfied watching all of it, beginning to end. And a lot of it is that, and you know, that, that, that basically means that, you know, this entire slice of life concept of what takes place throughout the series is started out really well with the beginning of all the stuff. And when I first watched it, I didn't care so much for how the action evolved in the second half. But I've come to appreciate it better for what it is. And that is, I stopped comparing it to Evangelion, which has a very spectacular Monster of the Week um, concept, which uh, basically just, it was something very different. Every time an angel shows up in Evangelion, you know something new, really new, is coming up. And with figure 17, they kind of set up that expectation. So if your first time watching it through, you'd probably expect a bit more of um, the Maguar than what the series actually provides. But if you go back and think about it, it's probably a bit more reasonable with what it was saying all of that stuff was adding up to in the second half and why it was so important basically for that part on its own. The truth of the matter is that even the series as a whole the slice of life is just really good and even if the um, Monster of the Week stuff isn't as spectacular they tie into each other in a way that keeps the story moving in a way. It, it prevents it from stagnating it on anything it, it gives the series a purpose. You can feel that purpose evolving as the series goes. You can um, enjoy it. So you can continue enjoying the slice of life, basically. And I consider it one of, you know, a pretty, a, kind of an overlooked Magical Girl anime. But the Magical Girl concepts are probably most stretched by this one. It still follows a lot of the major conventions, but it does it in a very sci-fi, more sci-fi than even Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha, which is basically magical science. Whereas this one is just, everything is science, there's just these unknown aspects to it that are part of it, and there's still the transformation, the dual life, um, etc. So, it's kind of a push to call it Magical Girl, but not so much as a lot of other things that may seem obvious at first. Or, uh, I don't know. That, that's all confusing. Overall, I definitely enjoyed getting a chance to rewatch it. Uh, let's see. Everything else was new. Well, okay, I did mention Madoka DVD 1. I rewatched that, and I don't know if I have any new thoughts this time. And I don't remember why. But, uh, yeah, the other three things are new things. And, okay, so we're going to comment on those one at a time because I can't make any overall summaries of them. So, first of all, 
I watched the Blackrock Shooter OVA, which I imported from Japan a long time ago. Probably a yearish ago when I bought the uh, Garden of Sinners Blu-ray box set. Because I imported, since I missed out on the US release of Garden of Sinners, I imported a copy from Japan. And when I did that, I'm like, okay, I wonder if there's anything else that's obviously in so, Oh, look, Black Rock Shooter with all the extras in it. That one's a Blu-ray, and it has seven different languages' subtitles on them. So I imported that one as well. And I finally got around to watching it today, and it was okay. I, I think uh, I can see a lot of room for not liking it or liking it um, in many different ways, since especially, like, um... <clears throat> I'm not a fan of action for the sake of action, I guess. And there se seemed to be a lot of that sprinkled throughout it, but I kind of felt some interest in that in so far as I had a vague idea how it all connected. And when it finally did explain its connection, uh, that all didn't disappoint. It felt incomplete, like some OVA versions of a series could be. But the other reason, the other reason that I wanted to watch that um, is because I needed to get watching that out of the way because uh, the Black Rock Shooter series, which I think aired sometime within the last year, uh, that one's coming out on Blu-ray later this month. It says it has English subtitles, and I already pre-ordered that, and I wanted to be ready to watch it when um, that came in. Let's see. Let's follow that up with uh, Arakawa Under the Bridge. I watched the first season of that. I did not go on to the second season. Mostly because um, I was trying not to start anything big last night. But uh, I finished Arakawa Under the Bridge Season 1 yesterday morning. And it was okay. It's really not my can of worms. And the humor of it reminded me a lot of Cromarty High School, which is another one that kind of didn't synchronize right with me, right? And I think part of that is, um, you know, there's some forms of humor I definitely don't like. For example, people intentionally fucking with people. See, I like it where if you're going to mess with somebody, you're messing with somebody in a way where they know you're messing with them and they get to be a part of the joke, too. So if I'm going to pretend that the reality of a situation is completely the opposite in a way. I will say it in a way that indicates I'm being very sarcastic. So that the other person knows that I'm intentionally being sarcastic and I'm confirming what they said by just saying it in a rather absurd way. That's the kind of humor I like. And I know there are some people out there who just find humor in a, essentially other people's suffering. And I, I, it's not going to be a black and white thing. There's going to be shades of gray. I, I bet there's certain circumstances where um, I enjoy other people's suffering. And that may actually explain uh, why a lot of the hair anime humor kind of flies over my head. Because a lot of those kind of depend on the main male character suffering. And I'm like, those people are uncivilized assholes. Now, Arakawa Under the Bridge kind of feels like it's doing something similar to that. But not exactly. And I think the other thing is... I guess if I were to describe why both Cromarty and Arakawa do not appeal to me, it would be a kind of a thought that they're, they seem to be trying to be absurd but not willing to go all the distance, I guess. It's sort of like they're not trying to create absurd realities. They're just trying to create absurd people. And I guess my problem is that it seems like a denial of reality sort of thing, which I also don't care so much about. I guess it may be kind of similarly related to the concept of the uncanny valley, which is if there's some aspects of them that remind me too much about, maybe these are supposed to be kind of reality-ish, but they're not doing particularly convincing things that convince me that... 
I don't know. The other problem that came to mind is these could be anime adaptations of four pound comic strips, which are very hit or which could be very hit or miss for me. You know, because I enjoyed Azumanga, which was obviously implemented from a four pound comic comic strip, but maybe uh, it's not always the case. Maybe there's something in the way the humor is presented. Because I know that I've read a strip version of something from Cromarty where the guy talked about one thing, and I thought that was funny, reading it in that form. But then again, when I also watched Cromarty, I also found little parts here or there funny, but I don't know. It's real confusing. And I know for a fact that my feeling on this is not a very common one, simply because so many people did enjoy Arakawa. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's so funny that everybody will enjoy it. You could think of it like it scores over an 8. You can almost think of it like 80% of people will enjoy this. And that means 20% of people will probably not. And not doesn't necessarily mean they're going to hate it. It just means that maybe they are kind of indifferent about it. The truth is there were some interesting things about it, especially near the end. Um, the person I was watching it with also doesn't appreciate the kind of humor, but he might have kind of appreciated some of the turns it was taking-ish. Because they, the other problem with the series is that even with when stuff is not necessarily, even with the stuff put forward isn't necessarily entertaining, sometimes there's other things about it that are. So like for a lot of harem anime, they have uh, attractive things happening on the screen, which is like, well, I don't care for the humor, but I guess I'll just enjoy the parts that are um, visually stimulating, I guess is how I'd put it. And in other cases, sometimes it's like, I don't appreciate this anime's form of humor, but I appreciate why it's doing it, because it's deep. And Arakawa Under the Bridge feels like there are some parts of it that are deep, but it's really diluted with this uh, form of humor that it's trying to do. And the reason I'm saying that there's some more interesting parts in the later half and closer to the end is because that's when a lot of those ideas start surfacing a bit more. Because basically, I got the one. Of, this is one of the things I pulled off from Arakawa that I did enjoy. This idea that uh, you know materialism isn't um, the end all be all of everything. That seems to be a kind of underlying theme to it. Like, and there's also um, how you value yourself. The, the problem is that, um, you know, it's kind of not an overall focus. It's just a message that seems to be in there popping up, sort of like a, a little thing floating down a river or something. I don't know. Oh, well. So, I'm probably going to watch the second season sometime, and I'm going to try and make it soon, since otherwise it may be years before I watch it, given how long it takes me to get the things. But, for now... Um, let me talk about the last new anime I watched uh, this past week, and that's Shiki. And that one I actually really enjoyed. It's... Now, this included the Shiki specials, but they're integrated into the series at the points they're supposed to happen. And the truth of the matter is, I don't even quite know what the two episodes were. I was able to figure out what one of them, out, what one of them was, but I don't know what the second one was. So... Honestly, I'm actually kind of wondering how people, how anybody could have watched the series without watching those two episodes because it was a string of events from beginning to end. I had a pretty good idea. No, I'm not going to say that because I think that's something the series intentionally tries to do. It changes its gears in a pretty smooth and natural way as it goes. Kind of presenting a lot of different ideas. Because uh, the general premise of the anime is that there's a series of mysterious deaths going on in the town after a mysterious um, Western European family moved into the town. I think that's.
that's the appropriate way to describe that. And it changes gears, I would say, probably three times. And I, I thought it stayed pretty interesting the whole time. I mean, there wasn't a time... The, the only time I was questioning whether or not I would care about the anime was actually the very first episode. And that's because... Uh, um, the main girl is annoying. And I think she was intent... Not the main girl, sorry. The main girl that episode was about was annoying, and that was uh, probably intentional. I'm, which makes me glad, because if she was a main character, then it would have meant that the series creator, writers, whatever, were kind of uh, unsynchronized with what I would want to have seen. But in this case, I think they knew. They knew that they're thinking along similar lines to what I enjoyed. So they knew that... Um, she only had to be the main character for that episode. And it jumps around. It's hard to really say who the main character is because the focus of the series shifts as it goes. But it does feel like there's a lot of messages and stuff that you can kind of get out of it. It, it just... It was very interestingly done. And I don't know if I want to say much more, because uh, if I do, then I'll probably let slip more than I already unknowingly have. So there we go. That's everything I watched this week. I didn't even get to watch Space Jam, although I did watch all of um, Dragon Ball Z Abridged Season 2 so that a friend of mine could catch up on it. Yeah, I guess that's about it. All right.